guess that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come so I can sing my song. Have a little church and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. Yeah, yeah. Sunday school swing. All right. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. 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 Charge of the bad love, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Charge of the bad love, Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, Josh of all the bad love, Jericho, when the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. I've been waiting all week on for Sunday to come so I can sing my song, have a little church and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. The Sunday School Swing He's got the whole world in his hands 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 The sun, oh. Good morning, GCC kids, and welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Katie, and if you're here joining us today, be sure to pop over into the chat feed to say hello. Well, I enjoyed seeing so many of your smiling faces yesterday at our Easter egg hunt. I hope you had a great time. Well, we are in our Champions for Christ Challenge of having faith in God's promises. And many of you have sent in some really, really cool rainbows as part of the challenge. I thought I'd share some of them with you today. I received this rainbow from Eden. Isn't that fun how she used all of these um, craft items from around her house? I also received this one from Ella and she has made her rainbow using rice and then painting it. Isn't that so clever? And even makeup um, removing wipes, some cotton swabs for the clouds. It's so creative. Gabe, he created this amazing rainbow using noodles, some pasta from around the house. What a creative idea. So if you'd like to participate in the challenge, you can find the information on our Kids Ministry tab from the GCC website. We are going to practice our song of Hebrews 11 verse 6. It is our Bible memory verse for the month of March, and it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Let us sing our praises this morning, starting with our memory verse song.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Sunday School. For our question of the day today, we want to thank you, um, have you think about some previous lessons we might have talked about um, or some different Sunday School lessons you might have heard from other people and think about who's your favorite hero from the Old Testament. Now if you're not sure maybe who was from the Old Testament or who your favorite is, we're actually gonna play a game a little bit later, so it might help you reintroduce you to some characters that you might have forgotten. So hold tight, wait till the end of our lesson, and then we'll share who our favorites are. So today we're gonna be talking about um, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is what you would call the Hall of Faith. Kinda sounds like the Hall of Fame. Jason, can you explain what the Hall of Fame is? Yeah, so nowadays you might know um, Hall of Fame a lot of times from sports. Um, you might know it from, you'll hear somebody's a Hall of Fame-er. And that really could just be somebody who's really good or excels at their, their chosen gift or career path. Uh, again, specifically a lot of times you'll hear it in sports. Maybe whoever is a really good basketball player, they're in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, if people get voted in for being super good at whatever it is they are doing. So Hebrews is a book in the New Testament, and we know that the New Testament happens after Jesus' birth. So our Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11 talks about people from the Old Testament that showed that they had a lot of faith in God. So we're actually going to be talking about some of those people today. And remember, faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So, are you ready to play our faith game today? I think so, I'm excited. I might need your help as well. All right, are you ready for our game? I think so. All right, I'm going to describe a character from the Old Testament, and you have to tell me who you think that is. I might need your help here at home, so be sure to shout it out if you know as well. Absolutely. All right, our first one. This person built an ark to rescue his family, he trusted that God was telling the truth what he said about the flood coming. Do you know who the, this person is? I think a lot of us might know this one. This would be Noah. Yep, you got it. All right, here's our next one. This person had faith when she hid Israelite spies in Jericho. This is a little bit of a harder one. Hmm. Who could that be? Does anybody know? Say Rehab? Rehab, that's right. Mm. All right, so our next one is, this person was too old to have children. She was 90 years old and her husband was 100, but she trusted God that he would give her a family. Do you know who this person is? This one might be a little bit harder for some people, but I think, I think some of you are right. I think we're gonna go with Sarah? Yep, it's Sarah. All right, let's see. Here's our next one. By faith, this person led an army to march around the walls of Jericho for seven days and the walls fell down. Do you know who this person is? That would be, of course, Joshua. Yep, did you guys get it at home too? We hope so. All right, we have a couple more left. This person was swallowed by a whale when he didn't listen to God's plan at first but he had faith that God's plan was greater than his and he finally listened to God and went to Nineveh, even though he was scared to go there. Do you remember who this person is? This one I remember just because it's always one of my favorite stories to hear. And I think that would have to be Jonah. Yep, you got it. All right, we have one more. Let's do one more. Hmm. This is a hard one because there's three people that you have Ooh. to guess. Ooh. So these three people were thrown into the fire when they refused to bow to King Nebuchadnezzar, but they were not hurt by the fire and their clothes weren't even burned because they had faith that God was going to be with them. Do you guys remember who these people were? Yell it out if you know. That would be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yep, you got it. Good job, everybody. Did you guys do okay at home too? So hopefully this kind of helped you remember the people of the Hall of Faith that we talked about um, in Hebrews 11 and that we've talked about before here. So our story point for today is God works mightily through people who have faith in him. 
So I'm so thankful that we have everyone's story here that points us that they have faith in God who works miracles. Let's take a look at our video and learn more about these people with faith. The writer of Hebrews explained that faith is being sure that what we hope for will actually happen. Faith is obeying God because we trust Him. By faith, we believe that God created everything from nothing just by speaking. Many people in the Bible had faith, and this pleased God. Abel had faith when he gave an offering to God, and God accepted his offering. We must have faith in order to please God. By faith, we believe that he exists and that he rewards those who trust in him. Noah had faith too. He obeyed God by building an ark to rescue his family. Noah warned other people because he trusted that God was telling the truth when he said a flood was coming. God was pleased with Noah. Abraham had faith when God called him to leave his home. Abraham did not know where he was going, but he obeyed God. God made promises to Abraham, and Abraham believed that God was going to keep his promises. Abraham's wife, Sarah, had faith. She trusted God to give her a family, even though she was too old to have children. Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100 when they had their son Isaac. Abraham and Sarah went on to have many descendants. God gave them a family as numerous as the stars in the sky. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses had faith. Rahab had faith when she hid the Israelite spies in Jericho. King David had faith too. All of these people trusted God and so did many others. Having faith was not easy. Many of these faithful people suffered and they all died before God's great promise. The arrival of Jesus came true but they believed that God had a wonderful plan. God was pleased with them because they trusted him. God kept his promise to send the Messiah, his own son, Jesus, to rescue people from sin. Jesus is the true hero of the Bible. He gives us faith. We can look to him because in him, all of God's promises will come true. As you can see from our video and from our story, that having faith really wasn't that easy. And even though these people are considered biblical superheroes, they're still sinners and they still fail. But there's one superhero that is the best of the best. Do you know who that is? That's Jesus. And we can trust that Jesus is the perfect hero. Many people still suffered, even though they were faithful, and they all died before the arrival of Jesus, the people in the Old Testament. And this is what we call faith in action. So that all brings us to our big picture uh, question of the day, and that is, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to rescue sinners. Now that sounds like a real superhero. So. Let's talk about our question of the day, which was, what is your favorite Old Testament biblical superhero? So Jason, do you have one? I do, I think I have to go with Noah. I always think it's a, a pretty remarkable story. Uh, somebody to have that much faith in, in God to build this large boat and to be able to help get all the animals on the ship. That's a pretty large undertaking. Absolutely. I would probably say mine is Joshua. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and saying, just walk around this building and it's gonna fall down? Like, that's pretty crazy. That takes a lot of faith. <laughs> I mean, I've been in marching band for a, a, many a years and I don't think a building has ever fall, fallen over. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> So we're so thankful that you were able to come with us to Sunday School today. Um, we want to remind you of our challenge that we have going on for the past couple of weeks. And because we have so many stories about how people talked about Jesus and spread the news, we also want to thank the people who spread the news of Jesus to us. So our challenge is for you to write a letter to somebody to thank them that they were able to tell you about Jesus. Yeah, so again, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to spend some time with you each week. So we hope you again uh, will tune in next week for our next uh, Sunday School lesson. 
Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Piper from Rockford, Illinois asks, How can we believe in something we can't see? That's a great question, Piper. You know, a lot of it is we can't see God. And so it takes faith to believe in Him because, as you say, we can't see Him and it's, it's harder to believe in something we can't see. If, if we can see something, if we can touch something, it's easier to believe in. And so that's why we are called on to have faith. The Bible talks about faith so often. Uh, today's Bible story was the Hall of Faith from Hebrews 11, where we saw person after person who placed faith in God and trusted in Him, even if they didn't know exactly what would happen. So that's a big part of this answer. But there's another big part, and it's this. There is plenty that we can see and experience about God to know He's real. So our faith is not what is called blind faith. We're not just guessing at who God is and what He's like and hoping we're right. We can know we're right because of what we have experienced about God. And you know where we find that? Right here in the Bible. We go to God's Word and we can see so much evidence who He is, what He's done and we can have faith in Him and have confidence that our faith is sound. But also we experience it in our own lives, that God has worked in my life and so I know He's true. I've seen Him work. I've seen His effects in my life, which proves that He is true, which strengthens my faith. And I hope the same thing happens for you. So here's a question back for you. How will you put your faith into practice this week?